is it's a series of systems. You have a respiratory system, a digestive system, a reproductive system, an immune system. The human body is a series of systems. And societies are shaped and formed by humans. So we're always going to be subject to a system. You're never going to have a world without a system because humans are systems and we create the way society is structured. So you may hear the term at times, the collapse of the system, uh, reform of the system. We want a better system. And you can pull hope if you look back on human history and you have seen humans from caveman era to uh, kings and queens to where we are today. But you're but you don't want to go forward with the mindset of we're going to get to a new system that doesn't require some level of conforming compromise or work. It's impossible because you yourself, your body, um, again, is a series of systems. And if and if you don't get up, if you don't work, if your body doesn't flow, it, your, your body doesn't work. Like I struggle with my mom. She's in her 70s. And she's overweight with diabetes and her feet swell up and she gets aches and pains the less she moves. So I tell her, I stay hydrated and try to move your body because your body's a system. Your blood through your circulatory system needs to flow. And so as I make this video, we're in a debate. We're in an election year in America. So those are always contentious times. And we're in a debate because uh, the system is broken uh, due to uh, social, racial, economic inequalities. The system will always be broken when there are inequalities because there's a level of humans that need to be balanced. Like you need to eat a balanced diet, somewhat, uh, some more than others. Um, balance has always got to be part of any system. Every system collapses when there is a big imbalance okay so we're never going to escape this world where we wake up and it's perfect never going to be the case so we have to knock down that barrier in our mind because what happens when we dream of a heavenly world on earth is we forget the work the bullet points i did a video a couple of weeks ago about how why protests fail Protests fail because there aren't bullet points on what we need to do to execute. Now, you can't put all the burden on protesters because they're one part of the solution. You know, you need leaders in society that are gifted. You know, like I say, you need to grab your, not just your politicians, but your smartest, innovative people, whether it's the Elon Musk, whether it's the hedge firms, whether it's, um, you know, the community organizers, you know, the people that are gifted in an area, you need to get them together and there needs to be some energy. Energy doesn't last. Okay. Just like your body's a system, there's a time when it's awakened and there's a time when it sleeps. Okay. It's part of a cycle of a system. So right now the society is very awakened and urgent. And that's great, but it will go back to sleep. Why? Because it's part of human cycle of nature. And so Living with urgency is always important. And when you ask yourself the question, will the system ever change? The answer is the same as asking yourself that. I want you to ask yourself right now, tonight, or whenever you watch this video, will you ever change? Why? Because society is just a bunch of people. And what I've learned through the study of anthropology, which is the study of human nature, is that humans can change. It's very hard and incremental. And some change is generational. Certain people have to pass away. Even Moses, um, there was a whole generation before they got to the promised land, and he had never even made it to the promised land. He got tired of dealing with people. He said, God, kill me by this rock. I'm done. 
But I think about that in my life, you know, I had to go through a series of my life doing different things. It took me a while to change certain habits. When do people change? Well, when their suffering is great enough. When did I change my eating habits? Well, when my, I got nerve, nerve damage and I was in the emergency room, the pain was so great that it spurred me to change. Now, my mom's overweight. She's in pain. Why doesn't she change? Because not everyone changes. Change takes a long time. Change is incremental. And then once in a while, you get a big accomplishment. You know, like I tell people sometimes they want to play, they want to deal with YouTube. They want to be a creator. You know, they see me, they see others, they think it's easy. And it is. I mean, it's possible. I've done it. But what you'll realize is it's really a long-term thing that you make videos daily or consistently. Once in a while, out of nowhere, one video may go a little bit viral. You get a little bit of traction, but really it's the plugging away. Great to see you, Nathan. Love to you, Snow Panther. Love to all my members. This is a members-only chat. Every Sunday I do a members-only chat, and I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, brother. How's everything going with DoorDash? Uh, Nathan's living full-time in this vehicle. Uh, now you got a clean vehicle, man. I saw your video. I said, damn, this guy's car is clean as hell, man. He took out the back seats doing DoorDash. And uh, I saw that line on Krispy Kreme. Uh, you, you had a DoorDash delivery of Krispy Kreme. You had to let it go because the line was too long. So how's that going, man? I know you said you changed jobs. DoorDash has got to be downloaded on every Nomads app, the Dasher app. And you got to do it, guys. Always keep that revenue stream coming in. But it's great to see you, Nathan. Uh, again, any member that comes in tonight, leave a comment, guys. We'll talk about whatever you want. Uh, this is dedicated to you to show appreciation. So thank you. But, you know, like I do every day on this channel, like I structure a topic, right? Why? Because I know my, my YouTube channel, to make it grow, to reform it, I still need structure. Okay. You know, like you couldn't just upload a video and just talk about a million different things with no structure. It'd be very hard to change. It'd be very hard to get traction. You know, structure, creativity, and energy are what you need to deliver progress but progress is never perfect and you know it, it it's it's a balance it's a very much a struggle in life enjoy the moment guys i want you to remember in life okay as best you can i know life can be hard especially some more than others but enjoy the moment do the work reform um apply your life and your someone asked me today i left a comment on some channel about politics and they say, what have you done with your life if you disagree with, I disagreed with Ben Carson. Ben Carson was complaining that, oh, why are we talking about these social issues? There's still a lot of murders in Chicago. Well, well one is Ben Carson has been the head of low-income housing for four years. He hasn't done anything. Um, number two is the guy's a psychopath, tried to kill his mom with a sledgehammer. Number three, so I pointed all these things out. And then a guy asked me, so what have you done with your life? I said, well, one is I have actually worked in mentorship programs, help at-risk kids get GDs. I've had a nonprofit. I worked at soup kitchens. You know, I've volunteered times in my life. I've also partied. I mean, so, but I'm just trying to say, you're not going, I'm not going to be in the church forever. I'm not going to do volunteer work forever, but you should do some, some of those things, which I've done. Why? Because you have to be the change a little bit. You know, I now someone asked me, they go, well, what happened to your nonprofit? I said, I got burnt out. And I really realized that in life, if you're really going to affect the financial inequalities in the system, you need the government. The, the Wall Street discovered the same thing I did. There's no way the economic, can, can, the economic system can sustain itself without the Federal Reserve. And therefore, to cure the inequity qualities in the financial system, you need the Federal Reserve. You need the government. Okay, the same way it bails out Wall Street, you need it to bail out middle class and lower class to keep the quality of life, just like we keep the stock market at a, at, a, at a certain index. I mean, right now, the stock market does not reflect the price to earnings ratio. So really, it's not proper, but we lower the rate, interest rate, which makes stock appreciations go down. And we print more money, okay, which makes the system, you know, inflate. Okay. 
So if we're going to do that for Wall Street and for hedge firms, et cetera, then we have to do that for people. Uh, very simple. Uh, Journey would join. Shout out to Tennessee. I know Tennessee don't like that Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve emoji to you. Damn it, Tennessee. Journey with Jordan. Good to see you, brother. You used to live in Naples, Florida. And all my conservatives out there in Naples, Florida, you know what I'm talking about. I know you hate me because, you know, you know I'm a little bit liberal. But you know damn well I know what every person in Naples is doing. You're dodging state income tax by living there. You made a killing in a liberal state like New York or California. You got all your money. You hedged your bets. You made a killing and you're, and you're living good down there in uh, Naples, Florida. My mansion? No, I'm a Floridian too, guys. However, don't forget Tennessee. Got high poverty rate. However, Journey with Jordan's got a great job. Uh, IT worker. Hopefully you're still with that job, brother. I've been praying for you. But overall, you're a positive guy, man. Whatever you do in life, keep your voice active, but just keep showing up. Guys, if you keep showing up to your job every day, you change the system. Why? Because... The, the world doesn't need, a, I see you too, Nathan, we're going to get to you. Uh, good to see you, Frank. The world doesn't need a million presidents. It only needs one and one at a time. The world doesn't need a million senators. The world doesn't need a million nonprofits. The, what, what the world needs is more good managers or target. The world needs more good uh, workers uh, in the nursing industry. Wherever you work, you're leading, you're changing the system. Guys, if I'm working in corporate America and I'm dealing with people and I'm being and I have a certain temperament and I have a certain way to execute certain things, I change the system. You say, Sam, screw that. I want the collapse of the system. Well, revert back to what I, how I opened this video. Our body is made up of systems, circulatory system, digestive system, immune system. So if the human body is made of systems and humans control the earth or dominant of the earth, we're always going to have a system in place. Why? Because it's, it's the way it is. Okay. It's the way the universe operates. Okay. So it doesn't even matter if we go to Mars. If we go to Mars and Elon Musk saves us all and Elon Musk getting a bailout money, what? Go Google Elon Musk and there's a, a bill put together by uh, uh, Rubio from Florida they're putting together like this SpaceX bill where they're going to give government funding to Elon Musk to send rockets up into the sky. Why? Because they want to occupy Mars. Guys, even if we go to Mars, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a system. Why? Because humans are created of systems and therefore we implement systems. Okay. So don't begrudge the system by not being part of the system and working to make it better. Like, you know, if you can work, but you don't work, you cut off your nose to spite your face. There's plenty of people that voted for Trump. They knew he was, or guys, I, I wish we would have Hillary right now. But now, now I got to decide between Joe Biden and, and Trump. I'm going to pick Joe Biden, okay? And Donald Trump, and it's like we're screwed because I get Joe Biden, then I got to wait 10 more years to get AOC or someone like that, Okay. Because, guys, Joe, if, if Trump gets another four years, stock market would be all-time high. Inequality gap will be great. We'll probably be in total anarchy. The coronavirus will kill your grandfather, your mother, and everyone you ever know. Pluto, joined again, brother. Welcome to the live access chat, man. Pluto, joined for twice, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> but what I can tell you is this, guys. Speak your voice. See how they want to silence your voice? Like, guys, they, I get thumbs down from some... Conservative psychopaths that tattooed Trump 2020 on their forehead and they want to change me. I'm not, they're not going to change me. Okay. Now you could love me and we could debate. Like I know Journey with Jordan a little bit on the conservative side. Maybe he's full blown conservative, but I love him and I want the best for him. So I, you know, it's a tough thing for me. I'm still, you know, figuring that out on YouTube where I have to have self care. Social media will destroy your self care because guys, you're dealing with all everyone's thoughts. So I have to protect my well being. So that I can deliver my message and be myself. And then I have to figure out how to add a little bit more psychopaths once in a while to add to the mix of the conversation. But let's go back to the live chat, guys. Uh, thank you, Jordan, with Jordan. Thank you, Pluto. My man, Nathan, a.k.a. Snow Panther. Thinking about getting it detailed. That car clean as hell, man. You got to clean my car. My car dirty, man. <laughs> he goes, thinking of getting it detailed. DoorDash, a side hustle. Main, uh, not main career. Well, Nathan, you're a smart guy, man. Very smart guy, man. And, um, yeah, man, you got a clean car, man. You could Uber in that car so clean, but not with the back seats out. But, uh, either way, brother, just keep pushing forward. You're positive. Remember the hardest part about life is showing up. Um, and if you do that, you're fit. I would say more than 50%. I'd say 80% of the battle's done. 
Uh, Journey with Jordan, thank you again, brother. Shout out to Tennessee. Shout out to you, my man, Brandon, too, living out there in Tennessee. He's a truck driver, though, but he's a local truck driver. So shout out to you, Tennessee. Uh, Journey, thank you again for hanging with me, brother. Shout out to you in Naples, Florida. Frank, hey, Sam, are the gyms open by yet? No, good question. In New Jersey, I heard the gyms are still shut down to the end of June, probably. So Florida, they're open. In New Jersey, not yet. And uh, I know I lost my sexy, so I'll get my sexy back. Uh, I was in good shape, too, when these gyms closed down, man. But I plan to... Um, you know, get back in shape this summer. The time I get back down in Florida, hopefully I'll be uh back in shape pretty good. How about you, Frank? Where you at, man? Are the gyms open there? Pluto, thank you for joining again, brother. How are you, man? How's you? Are you are you in Reading, PA, brother? Uh, what's going on, man? Shout out to you, Tariq, Ramaz, Frank. Might be too personal a question. Uh oh. But did anything happen in your past relationships that makes you want a new relationship? You don't have to answer it uh, as personal. No, that's okay, brother. Nothing bad happened to me that makes me not want to have a new relationship. Uh, no, I've been very blessed to have relationships. Uh, obviously, I've broken hearts and I've had my heart broken. I'm human. So I've been, you know, on both sides of that thing. But I just found that once I got to my late 20s, that a relationship is just a lot of work. And I don't want kids. I don't want a family. So... It's like, why put myself through all that back and forth? There's some moments of greatness. You know, there are, you know, a relationship has moments of greatness, but more work than greatness. Now, if that's your desire, then you'll be able to figure it out for you. Uh, or you'll, you'll be willing to risk it. Guys, if you love to trade stocks, you may lose everything you have. But if that's what you love, you may be willing to risk it. If You, you know, if you love relationships, you may lose everything you have in a divorce or horrible thing, but you, you'll go after it. So... Not, not pe most people will never even want to consider living in their car. And I don't blame them. You know, 10 years ago, I wouldn't want to. So I'm sitting here sweating. And, I mean, so I just have come to the realization that you can do more with your life on your terms when you're single. Um, in every way, with your time, with your money, with your mind. And I remember after the last like little fling I had with an Asian mill from my 30s, I remember evaluating. I said, Sam, is our relationship really worth it for me? And remember, guys, when, when I'm talking about these things, these are my opinions for me. When I, when I ask myself, are relationships worth it? This is the conclusion I came up to. I evaluated my life on this earth at that time. I don't know what I was, like 30-some years old. And I said to myself, if I look back at the times I've been in a relationship, there have some been some great times with some great women. But overall, relationships... I've been more unhappy than happy. And I, I came to the conclusion that studying the data of my own relationships, nothing horribly bad happened, but overall I'm more mentally and emotionally stable when I'm single and happier on average. So, you know, that's what science is, collecting the data, looking at it and forming a conclusion. However, we know life is an exact science level art. However, we know humans are gluttons for punishment and, you know, if, if life was as easy as saying, look, you'd only need to eat 2,000 calories per day and you could live without any issue. But guys, how many people eat just 2,000 calories a day? You guys are probably eating me. You, probably, you guys are probably watching me. You're eating Chipotle. You got a milkshake. You, you know, you got Kit Kats in the freezer. Uh, you know, you're drinking liquor. Uh, you know, humans want you know, more than we need. us uh, human nature. So, uh, but I've just came to the conclusion of, uh, relationships aren't worth it for me. Hope, hopefully that answers your question. Thank you, brother. Uh, Nathan, can you block a member? Trolls might join sooner or later. I could. Yeah, I could block anyone. Um, so obviously I've blocked people that super chatted me. So I think people know, and if they don't know, they'll find out if someone became a member and they became negative, I would block them because I block people that have donated a lot of, you know, not a lot of money, but money. Uh, so, you know, look guys, YouTube's a side hustle, but I have to have peace and self-care. Self-care and peace come before anything. Uh, because without that, I have no channel. All I have is just, I'm, I'm stripping and I'm losing my soul. So, you know, like I say, if you ever do social media for a side hustle like DoorDash, you have to know what it is. And and you have to be ask yourself, what are you willing to give into? So I, I do admit that I probably have to get a little bit better in dealing with alternate perspectives, but 
what I tend to have learned is I'm never going to make them happy and it's just going to be a battle and it causes my self-care to suffer. And I don't think, I don't think they get anything out of it. However, I will admit that there's been times where I've been a little bit quick on the trigger to block, but you know, it's tough when in doubt I block, I'm not saying that's right. And maybe I need to grow a little bit more in that area. These member chats help me because I do feel more protected. The member chats, like I don't have to really always look at the side of my thing to see like who's going to say something because, you know, this members only, you know, these are people who support me and know me and accept me. And, you know, and, you know, it's, and same thing with them. Like I'm not, you know, so that's what does make that special. And uh, for whatever season, again, it's, it's a, it's a thing that anyone can change at any time. You guys aren't married to me. Okay. It's not manipulation. It says that when you sign up, you can cancel at any time. And I say that to you. I love you guys. Look, at the end of the day, memberships are help me build the level of consistency with YouTube because their their revenue is very weak when it comes to AdSense revenue and things like that. So, and you know, I don't want to manipulate people for super chats. I just be myself. I get a tip. I don't. So, memberships kind of add a stability to the income to know what I'm going to get and et cetera. But ultimately, like I always tell you guys, and I mean it. I mean, I say it every day, almost every on every video in some way. Do what's best for you, obviously, as long as you're not hurting anyone. So I want you guys, and you guys don't need me. We're maybe connected for a season of our lives, but you need yourself more than you need anyone else, including me. Um, because I believe that when we take care of ourselves well, we can be better in society. We can be better at our jobs, better leaders. I'm more patient with my mom. Um, when, I, when I'm taking better care of myself, I'm better with my mom. When I'm like, when I have a lot of anxiety and if I didn't go for a walk and if I didn't do what I need to do for me, I'm not as patient with my mom. So I, I you know, I, I'm a believer that in a healthy way, you need to focus on self-care first and then you need to serve society and yourself, etc. And uh, that's what you got to do. Uh, love to you, man. Uh, so let's continue to read the live chats. Uh, Pluto, uh, love to you, brother Sammy. Much love, much love back to you, Pluto. What's up, man? What's going on in your life, man? Good to see you. He goes, I am still in Reading, PA. Okay. Visiting my brother. Shout out to all you and your brothers, uh, Ramaz and my man Tariq. I'm thinking I want to stay around them for a while. So I'm thinking of maybe finding work in NYC and maybe Florida during the winters. Yeah, be a seasonal worker. NYC is still pretty much shut down. So that you got to be a little bit careful on. Uh, I don't know when that's going to open up. But if you were going to be a seasonal worker, I think you're in the insurance industry. Uh, you know, insurance industry, I'm sure you could work remote. Uh, so look on indeed.com, look on uh, LinkedIn, uh, and just Google, you know, whatever specific insurance industry that you're in and uh, look for remote jobs now while they're hiring remote. Um, and if you work remote, then you can work from Reading PA, Florida, etc. cetera. Uh, so yeah, that would be uh, kind of what I would tell you, but yeah, look, if you could be a snowbird, I mean, there's value in that. Uh, right now, there's a lot of rain and flooding in certain parts of Florida. But, you know, I spent I spent summers in Florida. The, the weather up north right now is very nice. Uh, it was like 80 degrees today, sunny, clear skies, low humidity, nice. You know, it's hot, but nice. I like it. But the, the, vi the environment's not tropical. But right now in Florida, you know, you got the rain. It's rainy season. It's muggy. It's, it's, it's humid. So it's always the give and take. But I, I plan on probably being in New Jersey to the fall at this point. Love to you, man. Best of luck on your decision. My man, Frank. I'm in phase two. Starts this Wednesday. Well, there you go. Good, brother. Yeah, phase two, I think most states are, are in just about phase two. I mean, New Jersey and New York are two of the hardest hit states in America. So I would say, guys, if you're not in New Jersey, uh, if you're not in New York, New Jersey, or uh, California, you're probably in the gym. Uh, I don't, uh, Tom, what about you, man? You're in North Cal. Uh, I don't know if you go to the gym. You're in North California. What phase are you guys in? Uh, love to you, brother. Uh, he goes, Sam, did you go for a walk today? Yeah, I went for several walks, man. And uh, I can't walk. I'm 40. I can't walk as much as I did when I was 30, but I'm still out there walking. Oh, Tom's in phase three already? Well, that's cool. Yeah, Tom left a comment uh, today. It was interesting. He made an excellent point that his employer, Tom's an auto mechanic, um, had to hire his employees back or keep them because he took the um small business loan so in america for the uh part of the bailout package um was that to keep our economic system afloat during this uh pandemic 
they would give small businesses a loan that would turn into a grant if they kept all their employees. What's the difference between a loan and a grant? Well, a loan you have to pay back. A grant is something given to you you don't need to pay back. But it only goes from a loan to a grant if you keep your employees. So what's going to happen is most companies are going to keep their employees so they don't have to pay the loan back, but there's no timeline. So like in two months, if the economy doesn't pick back up to full steam, they'll lay people off. And in my opinion, I mean, that's where you're going to see if America goes into a recession or not in the end of 2020 to 21. Again, especially considering we're in election season, it's going to be, it's going to be, and you know, Donald Trump, he ain't going to leave without fight, man. It, you know, whether he does get reelected or he doesn't, you know, one thing that guy's going to, he's going to be a bastard till the day he dies, you know? So, you know, hopefully the American people don't have to suffer too much. And that's why I really don't like him at all because he's making the American people suffer. He could still be, a, he could still have conservative policies, but he's tweeting stuff and inciting stuff that is totally on call for. Um, and it's just, he knows what he's doing just to spark his emotional base that will support him. Even if he would shoot someone, just like they said, just like he said during the uh, campaign that even if I shot someone on sixth, sixth street, my supporters would still support me. So like after how you've seen he's behaved, you still, so there are some people that still support him, but that's fine. If you support the policies of the uh, conservative mindset, but the person he is, and what he has done in the past several weeks, to me, has hurt our country more than help it. And if we just look at the stock market, we say, well, it doesn't matter. Stock market's up. Uh, look, guys, well, you know, look, we've all sold our soul in, in, that, in the system sense of speaking a long time ago. And um, it's sad, but it's true. Um, so, you know, it's tough. You know, like I say, one is let's take a hydration break. Why? Because your body is a series of systems. Your body is 80% water or something like that. Someone Google that. What percentage of your body is water? It's like 80, 90%, I think. So my mom's having cramps in her side and she's constipated. And my mom struggles with drinking water. She drinks a lot of uh, tea, sweet tea, uh, soda. And if you're not hydrated, guys, your system ain't gonna work. Your digestive system, okay? Every, you're never gonna escape a system, guys. And a system, everything needs to work and it needs to be in balance or else total disaster. But I don't know, we're getting ready to embark on a new week, guys. Uh, we're getting to, you know, we're in the second week of June here, 2020. Uh, so, so, you know, someone commented, uh, my man Rich from Canada, he commented on one of my videos today. He says, Sam, you know, from what I'm seeing on the news, it looks like America's on fire. And that's not the truth. Uh, I'm out in society every day. Most of society is very peaceful. Uh, most of society is still functioning. More and more society is still opening up. Uh, America is not on fire. There are, there are protests in, in major cities, but most of them, 90% of them peaceful and, uh, people are treating each other well of all races, all colors, all religions. So, you know, there's always a different perspective and it's very mentally damaged to watch the news nonstop. So just make a note of that because you have a mental system, you know, in one sense, you know, your thoughts and, uh, it's good to be informed, but you know, I'll probably do a video about that tomorrow. You know, social media and media in general has always been a struggle mentally. You know, how much pain we digest through contentious issues. Like, you know, when we watch um, like someone die through police violence or we watch politicians arguing or we watch uh, rioting or we just hear people debate contentiously. You can only listen to so much of that before your mind suffers, your well-being suffers. Uh, and Tom, I made the comment one time, like, you know, because he knows I block people. He goes, I understand. He pretty much, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, I understand why you block people for your self-care. And that's true. I mean, you know, to, to, to have most of your day filled with arguments or hearing arguments, it will destroy your peace. You know, and that's what I, I've shared with you guys on this channel, like growing up, you know, my parents got divorced at eight, but when they were still together, I remember they were always arguing. And even in my house, you know, coming up, like most people's house, look, there was just a lot of like arguments. Well, maybe not most people's house, but for me, there was just a lot of craziness. Um, and that wears on you. 
Uh, and that's why, especially as I got older, I always wanted to work. I wanted to get my independence because I wanted to get, I wanted to just get out and have my own peace. Um, there's something to be said to be on your own, to have your own peace. And, uh, you don't need much. You know, I, I made that mistake when I was younger. I thought I needed to buy everything right away, buy a nice house, buy all the furniture, but you know, and I worked, so I bought it and I could afford it, but I went way above my means and it took me like a decade to get out of debt and it was a disaster. So my advice to any young person, yes, you should go out there, find your way in the system. Because again, no matter who you get in office, you're always going to have a system and make the system better by being a positive person within it and then look to reform it. And once in a while, you're going to get a big win, but will the system ever change? Well, I, I, let's take a pause. Will you ever change? The question is, many people will never change. Those who do, it will sometimes take an emergency and it takes time. Uh, and so that will help you digest dealing with society when you learn to deal with yourself. You know, sometimes I get frustrated with society because I say, man, why don't they just fix this? But then I have to remind myself, Sam, you know, it took you a while to fix certain things in your life. So it, it's tough, uh, but that's, you know, somewhat of what it is. Um, Frank, has your mom ever visited Florida? No, I don't know. Uh, I, she said she did when she was a little kid, but she doesn't really remember her father who's passed away, took her there. Um, but I don't think, uh, she said she pretty much doesn't remember it. So I'm hoping maybe get her there this winter. We'll see. Does she like the heat? <clears throat> I don't think she wouldn't like the Florida summer heat. No way. Uh, so she, she, she would like the Florida winters cause the Florida winters are like the New Jersey summers. So yeah, she would like the winter, but I don't think she would deal with the hot summer, but my mom, look, my mom's 70. She's mainly in the house. Like I had to take her out of the house today and it was a struggle a little bit to push her out, you know, but I pushed her in a weird chair. It was a nice breeze off the ocean and stuff, but, um, wherever my mom would go, she's going to be indoors probably 90% of the day. Um, she can't even stand that long, you know, to be in a store or something like that. So you know, look, if you're going to be inside and if you're going to be in climate control, does it really matter what it's like outside? Not much. Uh, so I, I think I can make it work, but I don't know if I'm ready for, I, I'm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll take it one step at a time, but that's kind of answers that Tom. Everything is pretty much open. You saw him out in North California. Everything is pretty much open, but people aren't sure if they want to go back to work, uh, to the restaurants, etc. That's another good comment. Well, everyone's still getting the enhanced unemployment benefits. So if you got laid off from a restaurant worker or something like that, until the end of July, you're getting paid an extra $600 a month. However, you have also have to pay for your own health insurance. Uh, Canada's getting $2,000 a month, and they already got their own health insurance. So it's amazing. I, I thought about that today. Like Canada, they, they're getting, they're not, they didn't get a one-time $1,200 check. They, they're getting $2,000 every month, and they got universal health care. Man, America, man, it, we leave our people behind, man. We leave our people behind, man. And, and I don't understand why. I, I really don't, man. And I don't understand why the people, you know, th there's so much in inequality, financially speaking. And I really do think that's the key. I mean, obviously, I think you need reforms in other ways. Um, but I, I, the key to everything is, look, your, your independence. And your independence is directly tied into your financial ability. To, guys, why do crimes happen? Poverty, it, poverty. Well, not all of them, but I would say 80% of crimes are based on poverty. Okay. And growing up in that poverty mentality, man, it's, you know, you say, well, Sam, just go get a job. And that's a fair statement to a certain extent, but you just have to put yourself in, in a different environment growing up with different people, which I spent time and you can easily get caught into a cycle of crime. Uh, it doesn't excuse it, but a big part of it is financial inequities. And look, the government played a part in that. How? Well, one is in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan allowed drugs to come into America, and they were directly funneled into lower and minority communities. Uh, that's what gave us the crack error, so he can fund a war uh, in South America. So that eventually spilled over into the suburbs, and, and that's how you know there's a lot of people in the suburbs that got addicted to drugs. But let's be honest. I mean, that's in the 1980s. That's not too long ago. Okay. So that created a whole system within itself. 
you know, and some people say intentionally that was directed there to, to, to hurt the minorities and to hurt the civil rights and everything else. I mean, it's possible. So there's a lot of reasons the system creates the inequities. And the biggest reason is, look, people on top, they ain't giving up anything. It's very rare that you get someone that does well that wants to give back. However, not that much also, because I heard Michael Jordan today speak up and he's donating money. I saw Kanye West donating money speaking up. I see people all over, all different colors, trying to change the system. And that's healthy and that's good. And it's a generational change. I, I, look, you got about 10, 15 more years before the baby boomers die out. When the And there's some great baby boomers that aren't necessarily in agreement about how, where we're going now. But in 10, 15 years, there's still going to be conservatives, but you're going to have a certain generational mindset that's going to be dead. You're still going to have an imperfect system. You're still going to have different philosophies, but you're going to have, you know, again, like when Donald Trump was 20, there was pretty much still segregation in some areas. There were still law and order governors that were uh, oppressing certain people. So, you know, when he was in 20, you know, like when you're 20, my life was different. So some of the cycle of the system is age, you know, it's just uh, the way, you know, for whatever reason the world operates, you know, so I don't know, you know, again, guys, try to enjoy your life as best you can. Um, we're stuck in the system of this world for about 80 years. That's the average life expectancy. So you're trying to find purpose, happiness, and joy within those 80 years and make it a little bit better, make the system a little bit better. Uh, Tom. Everybody is struggling just to eat and rent, forget to go to the dentist or doctors. I agree in America. I agree with that. Uh, to me, and that's what Barack Obama tried to do, get universal health care. Barack Obama tried to spend more on health care and less on the military. Now we have martial law and we have, we, they defunded health care and they defunded education. And they funded the military and the cops. So it's amazing to me that a lot of conservatives don't want big government. But when you fund... When you pour all your resources into the military and to policing, wh where's the f funding coming from? It's coming from health care and it's coming from education because you only have so much in the budget, uh, even though Donald Trump has run up some of the biggest deficits of all time. So, guys, I mean, if we're going to go into deficits, I always tell you, let's fund the, the basic human needs <laughs> of health care, of, you know, I mean, it's just like I really do feel America is more and more becoming imbalanced. And at its own demise, because if you want, if you love America and you want to succeed, you want the system to be more balanced. Why? Because you want it to succeed. You, you want your children growing. Guys, it only gets worse if you let the economic imbalances get bigger and bigger. So, you know, now you say, well, we're only talking about this because of the coronavirus. Before that, the economy was great. Well, I don't think so. I mean, for some, uh, and, and I would even consider myself for some, but. For those who are doing good, like Michael Jordan, Kanye West, or anyone else, that's you got to speak up. Why? Because, guys, if you, if you think that it only takes a couple months for the economic system to break down, what type of foundation do you have? And what type of leaders do you have? Like Canada and the UK and Italy, they all did one thing when the coronavirus hit. They said, you know, we're going to take care of our people. They're gonna ha they already got universal health care. They're going to get $2,000 a month. Like in, in, in Italy, like they froze their mortgages for like six months. Guys, they, they love their people. They don't love the flag. They love their people. Okay. Guys, you can never say you love America and you don't love the people of America, of all walks of life, of all economic systems. So I really do question the sincerity of a patriot when they say they love America, but they don't want, uh, you know, basic human dignity uh, at the core of its policy and budgeting. You know, you want a stronger military, but not a stronger healthcare system? What type of person are you? You probably go to church every Sunday, right? I doubt it. You probably do, and you're probably the biggest fucking hypocrite I've ever seen in my life. You know? Piece of shit. That's how I feel. Uh, Tom, that was the only time I got a checkup when Obama was president. Let me tell you something, guys. Obamacare may not have been perfect, but it pushed the rock forward. Uh, but they didn't like that. They defunded Obamacare, and they funded the military. And what did Donald Trump do? put the military on the people and worried about the stock market. So it matters. If you ever ask yourself, does the presidency matters? It matters. 
And if you ever ask yourself, will the system ever change? Well, it depends on the president. It depends on the senators. Guys, you got to vote senators, uh, Congress people, mayors. All those guys get voted. Um, and so, you know, look, is it is the system ever going to be perfect? No. Uh, you would love to have a balanced person of both political philosophies reasonably govern and make reasonable laws. Okay, Now, I know I seem very liberal, and obviously I'm combating a very nasty president. But guys, I got no problem with certain conservative principles. Okay, But obviously I have to bark louder because it's way out of skew right now. And I, I don't know, maybe the system itself is, is created, though, to keep the division. I do think that sometimes, like most things, I think if you had a, if you had some fair people in the room, you could figure out basic compromises. So in one sense, the system may be a little bit evil where I think they do kind of create it where you have to like be divisive, uh, but you got to be divisive to get in. I mean, it's almost like there's no way you could be a calm mannered, very balanced person and get in the energy level is just not there. You almost have to be very intense, you know? So it's tough, but look, I, I don't care what it is. Look to me, it's like, you know, what do you want? You want the all time high stock market or do you want a decent president? I mean, how, how Donald Trump has displayed, he broke constitutional rights. Um, and even to today and this weekend, what he's been tweeting and inciting, I blame him for some of those riots. I do uh, for, and uh, you know, I felt the, the hate stirred up when he was tweeting them. There was no reason for it. Guys, even though in the coronavirus before the riots, he was contentious. I mean, why would you be contentious about a, a, a health care thing? You know, it's like it's not even like something to argue about. All he had to do was stand up there and say, look, guys, this sucks. We're going to get through it together. Here's what the health experts say. Here's what I'm saying. This is what's going on in the world. And let's get through it. But the whole three months of the coronavirus, it was so painful to watch his daily breeze conferences. And they became so contentious. Like, come on, man. That's an easy win to me. It's like, you know, if you want to just be a decent human being, we have a healthcare crisis. Why would you be an asshole? But his whole life, he's been an asshole. He, his parents thought he was an asshole and they put him in boarding school. And he even gave an interview and he said, look, I was, I was a troublemaker when I was young. I was an asshole. And they, my parents put me in boarding school or whatever. And the, and the interviewer said, well, what do you think about yourself now? He goes, well, I'm still an asshole. <laughs> he knows he's an asshole. You know, if you ask most people like they know he's an asshole, piece of shit. So, but they still vote for him. Why? Some of it's racism. Some of it's, it's privilege. They don't want to lose anything they have. They don't really want the system to be more balanced. Look, guys, there's some low performing people that are living uh, off their family's history and they wouldn't be able to survive in a balanced system. They're low performers and they know it. And so, you know, they got to keep the system skewed towards them. Uh, let's continue. Uh, all right, all right, well, let's take hydration breaks too. Got anything else? Again, guys, every Sunday I do my members only chat. Uh, every sun, every live feed, I structure a specific topic to direct the energy. But you know, I dedicate this. You know, you guys want to talk about whatever you want in the live chat. Uh, any of my members, all love. If not, I'm sweating my ass off. But I gotta lose some weight. I gotta get back in shape. I, I miss those weights, man. It'll happen. It'll happen. But uh, all right, guys. I think we read them all. I think you guys are doing good. Uh, push forward, man. One day at a time, guys. Very, it's been a very challenging couple months, a few months, no doubt about that. And uh, it could break you mentally. Um, but things are getting better in some instances. And I do see society itself and the system reforming and changing some. Uh, but again, will the system ever change? Well, you always look in the mirror. Will you ever change? The answer is yes, but not often, and it takes time. Tom, I search YouTube, cop kills teen, tons of incidents. Yeah, I mean, obviously, just remember, YouTube is trying to capitalize all views. I mean, I'm a stripper on YouTube, so I know what the game is. Sometimes I don't play the game. Uh, I do believe that most cops are good. Uh, I, I believe that. Uh, I believe the majority of cops are good. I believe the majority of people are good. You guys often heard me say that in life. I'm very honest about that. And, but I do think, you know, you have a recurring pattern of bad behavior. I do think the uh, system itself with the inequalities and in it still needs to be reformed uh, uh, for minorities and for all people. I, I'm a proponent of a shared stock market. Everyone gets a dividend and minorities get a higher dividend for a few generations or whatever. And, um, 
But, you know, you got to be very careful about, you know, the videos you watch and even watch on, even when I go see my mom, like I don't have the news. I mean, I watch different videos on YouTube, but I don't have the news. But when I go to my mom's house, the news is on. So uh, when I go to an apartment or whatever. And so, you know, I don't know, man. It's like, you know, uh, again, a guy, a guy from Canada commented on my video today. He said, um, it looks like America's burning. That's not the truth. Yeah, I saw girls in bikinis today. I saw people surfing. America's not burning, you know, and so, you know, but on a, on a video, on the news, it may seem like that, but it's not the case, so, all we can do, man, is stay positive, watch your porn, watch, uh, masturbate at least once a day, in my opinion, go for a walk, drink more water, stay hydrated, keep your digestive system primed with water, your body's a series of systems, respiratory system, circulatory system, digestive system, keep your body lubed up, Tom, under trained cops, they jump to deadly force, yeah, I mean, look, it's it's um, it's true, man. I mean, um, it's a tough job. Uh, I remember I had to call my own family members on the. Uh, I had to call the cops on my own family members at one time, and I saw how tough it was to handle them. It's tough because a big part of it is you're dealing with mental instability, and and that's one part of the financial system that isn't. You can't just give people money and you cure them mentally. That's where you need, you know, I don't know if you could, I don't know what you could really do with the healthcare system. What, what men, well, one is I think that's, that's where we need the educational system. I think in high school and in middle school, there, there needs to be classes on mental health and there needs to be early diagnosis of people who have certain issues, not to condemn them, but to help them and to help us all uh, and to train us all. I think society is undertrained with mental health. And I think a lot of crime and a lot of uh, cop incidents are related to dealing with people that are extremely emotional. Uh, there's a mental issue somewhere in the equation. Um, you know, like, again, even in the educational system, I like to say a, a class on emotional health. Emotional health and mental health, that should be like uh, 25 to 30% of the daily teachings in, in educational system, very young. Because that's most of society's problems. Like, when, when, do, when do you get the cops called on you? Well, one is if there's domestic violence. You know, you're always, you know that's where you're going to see cops called. Uh, number two is if there's uh, some type of uh, crime, uh, usually theft. And theft usually comes from a financial issue. And outside of that, you know, maybe other petty stuff. And you're always going to have a few psychopaths that are really just out there. There's nothing you can do to change them. Shout out to Ben Carson. Uh even Ben Carson became, uh, you know, brain surgery, but now he's had a low income house. And he's a disaster. He's not doing nothing. Uh, Tom Reagan closed down. Yeah. He, uh, he closed down a lot of the mental institutions. I, I don't know if it was under Reagan. Yeah. It was under Reagan. I know. Yeah. They did that. I, I don't know if a mental institution will help. I mean, I guess it may depending on how you structure it, but you know, I, again, you can't cure certain mental illnesses, but I think very young, just teaching on mental health and mental awareness will help in the early guidance for all of us, because we all have mental health and we all have mental issues. And then also the early diagnos uh, di diagnosing, because like just like any disease, any illness, the earlier you diagnose it and treat it, the better you are. But what's happened is, guys, we got volleyball, we got uh, you know math, algebra, you know, we got history class, all those things are fine, but... It's just teachers reading off off a book. Uh, all those things are fine, but guys, you gotta shorten the school day. You gotta teach financial literature. You gotta teach uh, mental, emotional awareness, physical health, social issues like how to deal with people, how to deal with different perspectives. Uh, you know, but I, I really don't think that society wants that. You say, well, Sam, well then they should do homeschooling. Well, I know some people that did homeschooling. I don't know, but then it's skewed to their perspective. Like I know a lot of people did homeschooling. It was all about based on their religion. And then their kids grew up and they think, well, that's the only religion. And that's the only, and that creates a whole philosophy. So the bad part about homeschooling is you're only going to know the perspective of your mom or your dad. You know, when you go to a public school, which I went to, you're going to get the perspective of every different teacher. You're, they're going to be socialized. I socialized. You know, I, in our high school is very diverse. You had people, Asian, Indian, uh, black, white, you know, everything. So if you're homeschooling, you're only going to know people that just look just like you, your, your mom or your father's going to teach you whatever their values are. And some of that may be very good, but it's also going to be very narrow minded. 
Uh, so that's the problem of homeschooling. You know, again, not that I know they have outings and it can be a good thing. I think remote learning, I think remote learning and the educational uh, change in, in the, the, the change in the system with education, technology is going to play a part. It's got to. And, you know, because through technology, you can be in your house and you can get those different perspectives and you can interact a little bit more than if you were just doing homeschooling out of a book. So, you know, that's that's a tough thing. Frank, are you going to stay at a campground while in NJ? Uh, yeah, I had some reservations. Uh, some I canceled. Some I, uh, I I already stayed once. So I'm not sure about long term what I'm doing. Uh, but, yeah, the uh, uh, campgrounds in New Jersey are open up as of June 1. So they're open up. Uh, yep. So I, I don't know about like some States on Massachusetts and things like that. I don't know if they're fully opened up yet and you have to check what tent camping. And if you're living out of your car or van, you're tent camping. Some, the, some of the, uh, sites have restrictions where they don't, won't let you tent camp while we're still in this quarantine thing. So check that out too, Tom. County health would give them free meds at least and counseling rig and cut that. Yeah. See, I, yeah, I'm not versed on that, but I wouldn't doubt it. You know, again, I, I definitely could say that you, you do see a uh, good comment, Tom, over the course of the past few decades that we've taken our budget and we've taken it away from public health care and it's been divulged more towards military. Um, and I think that's a mistake and I think we're seeing it. Um, guys, we need a good society, man. We need good people. Um, you know, it can't just be about having a strong military, strong, you know, that's you know, that's not the answer. I mean, again, you're never going to have a perfect system, but it can be better. Uh, it can change. It may take time, uh, but I do have hope uh, that what I've seen through human history is change is possible. The system does change. Slow, steady, and then sometimes if you look back, how far have we really come? I still think we've come really far, but I still think there's more to go. Um, and so it can be sad, though, if you look at it cynical. I mean, there, there's some bad things, but uh, I think there's some hopeful things, so we'll take that for what it is. Uh, but thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you to all my members. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Keep doing the best you can. Keep pushing forward. Stay positive. Keep positive people around you. If you can't find positive people, go for a walk by yourself. Don't watch too much negativity, but watch enough to be informed. But watch some things that make you smile, laugh. Uh, again, masturbate. Watch some things that you know get your reproductive system cleansed out. And, uh, you know, enjoy your life as best you can, guys. It'll be over soon enough for all of us. So make the most of it, guys. All right. God bless you and thank you.